What's up? My name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to a follow up to a previous video of mine. This video is going to cover what NIS is from NVIDIA and whether you should or shouldn't be using it. Before we even get into explaining exactly what it is, effectively it lowers the resolution of your game while you're playing it and gets you more FPS. Though it uses some magic technology to try and make it look less like a lower res and sort of upscales it using magic, not DLSS. Is it worth enabling and does it have a performance impact and a visual impact? Well, of course. On your screen now, you're looking at Battlefield 2042. Not the most optimized game, but there is a little bit of a difference here. 2560 by 1440 native, I'm sitting around the high 80s. However, when I enable NIS and crank it down to 1080p, rendering at a lower resolution in game, and it's being scaled up by my graphics card, I'm sitting at the low to mid 90 FPSs, which is somewhat of an improvement, though of course this isn't at all the best game engine to be going off of for any kind of change. Then CSGO, a predominantly CPU limited game, also had some kind of an impact surprisingly. At 1440p native for me, I got an average frame rate of 249 FPS using Uletical's benchmark. When I crank it down to 1080p, that FPS goes up to 277.95, which is an improvement. We'll get to the visuals in just a moment. Cyberpunk 2077 on native 1440p, I netted around the low to mid 70 FPSs. When I cranked it down to 1080p using NVIDIA NIS, I was sitting very happily at high 90s to low 100 FPSs. That's a very good increase of roughly 25 FPS. Then when I cranked ray tracing all the way up to ultra on my NVIDIA 3080 Ti, I dropped to 60 FPS on 1440p native. But when I cranked it down to 1080p, still using RC Ultra, I went all the way up to 75-ish FPS and sat around there, mid to low 70s. Which isn't too bad, there's definitely an improvement here. Then as for Dirt 5, at 1440p native, I was sitting at the low 100s to 110-ish FPS mark. When I cranked it down to 1080p, however, that surprisingly stayed right about the same place. I couldn't let the benchmark run to completion as it just never seemed to finish. The highest I seemed to get was around 115-ish FPS on native and all the way up to 120, maybe 130 FPS on NIS at 1080p. Dying Light 2. At native FPS, I'm sitting at roughly around 49 to 50 FPS, low 50s. But when I enabled NVIDIA NIS, I jumped all the way up to the mid 80s instead of the mid 50s, which is a noticeable improvement. Though, especially with this game here, I noticed a huge difference in visual quality. Let's get into that next. Visual Impact So, Battlefield 2042, did I notice any kind of difference using NVIDIA NIS versus no NIS on native? Well, surprisingly, not too much of a difference here. Aliasing was slightly more noticeable and things were slightly blurrier in the distance, but other than that, things seemed pretty well optimized. CSGO, however, had an absolutely huge change. When I was playing using NVIDIA NIS, aliased corners and lines were so much more obvious, they were much more flashy. Even though I do usually play the game on lower settings, it was very noticeable when I was using NIS compared to native resolution where I didn't notice jagged edges really at all. Cyberpunk was definitely more blurry when I was using NVIDIA NIS compared to native, though that is expected as we're playing at a lower resolution and scaling it up later. However, I'm not too sure if it comes through in the video, when I was looking around bright lights like traffic lights and things like that, and I turned around slowly, there was a noticeable amount of ghosting left behind the actual bright light sources, though I'm not entirely sure if that was my monitor or NVIDIA NIS working its, well, magic. Then, as for Dirt 5, there was barely any noticeable difference other than an even blur that was applied to everything across the image. Playing at 2K native, things looked pretty crispy, and when I was playing at 1080p using NVIDIA NIS, everything was evenly blurry. I would assume you can easily fix this by tweaking the sharpness setting in your NVIDIA control panel or GeForce experience. Finally, Dying Light 2. This had the biggest difference out of everything and I would not bother playing this game using NVIDIA NIS. Though the resolution is a little bit lower at 1600 by 900 compared to my other test where it was ran at 1080p simply because the game didn't have 1080p as an option for me. It only had 2560 by 1440, some weird in-between resolutions that weren't 16 by 9 all the way down to 1600 by 900. So maybe not the most fair example, though it is definitely worthwhile including in that I wasn't able to pick 1080p. Though, why was that? Well, possibly this could have something to do with the fact that I'm using an ultra-wide monitor and I've simply limited it to 1440p 2K instead of ultra-wide 2K. 
3440 by 1440. Why is that? Well, put simply, NVIDIA NIS does not work at all with ultra-wide monitors. And in fact, it may even hinder your performance if you decide to use it, simply because you're going to be rendering a 16 by 9 image, then scaling it up to be the correct resolution from, say, 1080p to 2K. And then on top of that, your graphics card will do further scaling to scale it to stretch across your monitor as it needs to stretch to take up all the resolution. Unlike normally where you can play with black bars, as soon as you play with NVIDIA NIS, everything on your screen is stretched to match your screen's resolution, no matter what you do. That does mean you can use rather funky resolutions in games and they'll always be stretched, but if you're someone who likes playing with even characters instead of them being short and fat, stretched out on ultra wide, then well, NVIDIA NIS is not for you, at least in its current state. Walter Wide is not supported at all. On top of that, my monitor is 3440 by 1440 at 165 Hz or 144, depending on what you set it to. However, as soon as I enabled NVIDIA NIS, I could keep it at that super high resolution with that super high frame rate. Though when I dropped it to 2K, the maximum it reached was 60 FPS. The same goes for 1080p and any other options down below that. I only had the option for 165 or 144 Hz all the way up at the highest resolution possible, which I assume steps around NVIDIA NIS entirely. So if you're someone with an ultra wide or high refresh rate screen, NVIDIA NIS may not be for you. So what exactly is it for? Well, if you're playing games that don't support DLSS, such as older titles, or of course you simply don't have a RTX 2000 plus graphics card, you're not able to use RTX or DLSS, then NVIDIA image scaling is a rather good choice here and that it can improve your FPS, though it will evenly blur pretty much everything. That's what the sharpening setting is for. If you find that a 20 to 30% performance boost is something you absolutely need and you're willing to sacrifice quite a lot of visual quality in most games, well, NVIDIA NIS is something you can play around with. Of course, you don't have to step down all the way, losing a third of your resolution from, say, 2K to 1080p, but you could simply step down one or two steps where it doesn't make a noticeable visual change, but there is a noticeable FPS change. I can't think of any example off the top of my head, but let's say you could drop from 2560 to just say 2200 or 2000, that wouldn't be too much of a difference and it wouldn't be a stretch to ask your GPU to upscale it while keeping things looking rather crispy, though you will definitely notice an image change. So NVIDIA NIS, would I use it? Personally, no. I have an overpowered PC, a 3080Ti, a Ryzen 3900X CPU, which is more than powerful enough to tackle pretty much anything that I throw at it, especially now because I upgraded my graphics card from a 1080Ti. When I had the 1080Ti, I ran my previous NIS video, which you can find linked down below, which isn't the best at explaining things. Hopefully this video is. There was a noticeable FPS increase when using it, though I was trying to mess around and use it in ultra wide, which didn't work work at all as expected, and that ended up being a video-wide tangent that I went on. At least here, it's a lot shorter. Currently, I wouldn't use it, and previously with my 1080 Ti, an exact same setup elsewhere, I wouldn't use it there either. Personally, it's just not for me. Now that I have an NVIDIA 3080 Ti, which is more than the 2000 required, I can easily use DLSS in most games, and in my opinion, it gives it a much better look than any sort of non-AI upscaling or downscaling. So I would avoid this feature pretty much completely. That being said, is it a waste? Not entirely. It's good that NVIDIA are diving into other things like this, especially because AMD has something called AMD FSR, which is somewhat similar. It doesn't use AI to upscale as far as I understand, but AMD Fidelity FX can get you a couple extra FPS and make your game look not too much worse than this over here. Personally, I have tried both AMD's Fidelity FX's and now NVIDIA's NIS and DLSS, and I would personally rate them as DLSS as the absolute best, then AMD FSR in second place, and finally NVIDIA NIS in last place. Though not every game supports AMD FSR or Fidelity FX. Finally, with all of that explanation out of the way, how exactly do we go ahead and set this up? Well, put simply, if you have the NVIDIA GeForce Experience app installed, open that up. If you don't have it installed, you can work around it, though I definitely recommend installing it, even though I personally don't use any of the options to automatically optimize my games. In my opinion, it either cranks settings up way too high or ends up making them look way too garbage. 
I'd rather manually change things myself. I'll first show you the GeForce Experience and then I'll show you the NVIDIA Control Panel. So I'll start up NVIDIA GeForce Experience now. Simply click Settings in the top left and on the General tab, I don't think you need it, but I have Enable Experimental Features ticked. You may need to restart GeForce Experience and or your PC afterwards in order for it to update. Scrolling down on this page over here, we have the image scaling option here. We can turn this on and choose the render resolution for our desktop so everything is scaled and hopefully you'll be gaining a couple of extra FPS. You can change sharpening here as well as render resolution. As far as I understand, when this is turned on, you can head across to the games tab at the very top and change things for each of these games here, though I find it much easier through the NVIDIA control panel. So in order to do it from there, right click your desktop and open the NVIDIA control panel. Heading across to the Manage 3D Settings tab, then Global Settings, we have an image scaling option here. We can change it from off to on and choose a sharpening amount over here. You don't see any resolutions here simply because you can choose them in game instead and it shouldn't adjust your desktop resolution unless you're say on an ultra wide monitor where it'll crank it down to 16 by 9 and leave it there. If you'd like to change it for specific games, you can head across to Program Settings up here, select a game and change image scaling over here as long as it's on as far as I understand. And with that comes the end of this video here. If you'd like to see what it's like to struggle with an ultra wide monitor trying to get this to work, you can watch my incredibly long over explained and over tangented video linked down below where I have side by side comparisons of more FPS in different games trying to run them at ultra wide, which is very confusing. I managed to half get it working mostly between 3840 by 2160 and 2954 1662 though that's very out of the way and definitely not a normal use case. So sorry about that if you watched the previous video and you'll end up more confused than before. Hopefully this video explained things better. My name's been Techno over here for Troll Shoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.